welcome back to another Sims 4 Speed Build video and today we are creating this pumpkin patch. Now, I've never created a pumpkin patch before and I know I'm kind of ignoring the big elephant in the room which is my very inconsistent uploading pattern but you know, um, a lot more effort has to be put into job applications and it is great in me because a lot of job applications before I get into the um, video. A lot of job applications, it's never, I'm cut, what, one thing I am doing is consistently changing my CV, which is my resume, and then just like seeing if there's any other things I could add. Like I have both a website and an individual presentation p portfolio. And then I'm just always like changing things as I see new jobs and thinking what is going to make me sound more employable and then on top of that, some jobs you apply for, you have to like re-put everything on your CV, even though it's supposed to automatically fill in. So you have to like re-input everything else. And then there's the whole thing with like, um, having to answer application questions. And it's, it's, it's been a journey. So I haven't been as consistent as I can be, but I'm trying to get basically the gist of every single thing I want in October out. Cause I have so many full ideas and I've already created like, so it's so like started the creating some full inspired builds, but I've been like, this can potentially wait for November. I need to really focus on like spooky kind of things. So there's going to be quite a few things coming out that have the kind of spooky effect um one thing i realized okay i'm not going to talk about it because i should just talk about that when the wait actually i can't talk about it a little bit just because that video is not actually going to have like me talking about it i've got this little thing that's going to be coming out to do with um spooky season something a little bit scary one of the things i find so fascinating as guess you know fascinating and scary i'm not going to talk about um, I know my thoughts are going all over the place, but I, a, lo a lot has been going on in my mind in the last few days, but I've never truly understood some aspects of horror and why people like them. Um, I'm not a horror fan at all. <laughs> Um, the last horror film I watched was Long Legs and that messed me up. Not in terms of cinematically. Like when I watched it in the cinema, it was fine. It was things that I kept hearing about Long Legs. So, um, retrospectively, that kind of just really messed up with my head. A lot of, I would see like a lot of TikTok videos and a lot of YouTube videos analyzing the film. And then I would start to notice things that I didn't initially notice whilst watching the film. And then that's what would mess me up because it just kind of makes me feel like, okay, if I was ever in an actual like supernatural situation, I would think, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's whatever. Um, only for me to like be on the bus ride back or be in my bed sitting down and thinking about the situation and being like, wait, hold on. There was someone there. Hold on. There was something there. One of the key features is that in long legs, there was a consistent shadowy presence within the entirety of the film that I was not aware of. Like, I'll see it occasionally, but as I said before to you guys, I'm a paranoid person. I see things anyways. So I was just like, oh, maybe I'm just not like properly concentrating on the screen. Like, I'll see it occasionally, but not as much as there actually was in retrospect. And that that's what messed me up. So Stuff like that I can somewhat handle. Gore, I cannot do like anything to do with blood. Even the littlest of blood scene within that film, my friend had to tap me and be like, hey girl, it's okay to luck now because it's over with. I can't, I can't hack gore, which is really bad because I can do SFX. Um, so I can actually do like gore. I, I did that in a lot of the films I created. I can create gore, fake gore on people but i cannot just physically myself watch it even though i know the process of creating it um so uh, there's certain aspects of horror i've never truly understood why people like it because i'm just like this is terrifying because i get it that you know it's not real but chainsaws torture or all that i can't i can't stomach it one of the biggest issues of why i can't stomach it is that every single time i watch something i feel as what I am watching. So that's why when I watch, for example, sometimes if I'm watching someone eating a crumble cookie or something, I can feel satisfied from just watching the video because even though I can never get crumble cookies in the UK, I feel satisfied because I feel that kind of empathy through the screen. Like I feel like I am eating it, so it's fine in that way. But it's horrible in other ways to the point that I can't 
watch um I can't watch like car from score because I will consistently think that oh I'll feel like it's happening to me and I can't do it I I can't even watch like hospital based stuff like Hobby City which is a big like hospital soap opera within the UK I can't watch that because as soon as I see like that kind of thing it just really feels like it's happening to me and I just can't do but I can read it I can read it. I can read quite gory stuff. I just can't watch it. So, in that respect, there's another element within gore that a lot of people can hack that I truly absolutely no way on this earth can do. And I'm not going to say what it is just in case they get flagged, but if you've ever heard of the film Fresh, if you've ever heard of the film Bones and All, if you've ever heard of the show Hannibal or the film Silence of the Lambs, they've all got a common trait to them. That one common trait sickening i can't hack it but i know a lot of people love watching it entertainment wise and storytelling wise and i can respect that because i watch a lot of analysis analytical videos about the different types of contexts in which that normally lies in there's always quite like a romantic undertone towards it all and everything like that so i can understand why storytelling wise people can like that because rea- realistically it's no different to slasher films slasher films are still like very like egregious in that kind of manner but like a lot of people like it so i can respect that in an entertainment sense when it's fictional characters and there's an underlying storytelling towards it and there's the context and the history behind the genre uh, or the type of um storytelling technique i can understand why people like it i just personally can't take it so but i never truly understood how someone could enjoy something that they both also find horrific like I, I just always used to think like how can you have such polarizing opinions towards this particular theme until it came to the topic of liminal spacing now if you know me and you've been watching me for a long time I did my entire dis- dissertation on liminal space and I did my year two project on backrooms dream realities and all of that and then my final year I did it on transitional space and liminal space and, and how that is how that during 2020 was such a pinnacle within that time because we were in a transitional time and we will also see in transitional places we will be becoming more aware and attentive towards things that we would normally just smooth right through like um a lot of the points a lot of people were being unemployed a lot of people weren't able to move on with their lives it was a very transitional period so that's why liminal space him became such a huge topic during that time and a lot of people find it very unnerving, especially the back rooms and the different layers and the law behind it. But I find it horrific, terrifying, but I also find a sense of comfort in it. And I find, I find a sense of um, entertainment towards it. So I feel like maybe that's the closest I can ever feel to what people feel in terms of slash films and horror and all those kind of things. Because it's a terrifying concept of the... And there's a repetition towards life. And since now I have finished, I graduated from university last year and I'm still actively looking for a job. I am the, the subject of my previous um, dissertation topic. I am someone who's struggling through this transitional period in my life, just endlessly waiting. I'm becoming to for the next point in my career and feeling this sense of just rep- repetition of just applying and sleep and applying and sleeping and the kind of closing and effect that it can cause that it is so terrifying and it, it's it's almost like there's like a darkness pulling you down because it's just it's, it's a situation that you should never really truly be in for too long but I've been in it for a year now but I also can find the sense of just I'm not beauty in my sadness, but a sense of just, oh, I've never been so attentive to my emotions the way I am right now. I've never been so aware of myself. And it's been, it's been an honest, it's been a very complex feeling. But yeah, that's basically what I decided to create as one of the builds that it won't have my voice over. That's why I'm kind of talking about it now rather than the pumpkin patch because the pumpkin patch is a pumpkin patch. There's really nothing else to say about it. Um, but yeah, that's why I was talking about it because I just thought that's something I want to 
showcase on my channel that I've never done before. That's one of the things that I truly find very spooky. But yeah, just to end it all off as we are going on to the tour, this is a beautiful pumpkin patch I created. It is listed under a cafe, but I'm pretty sure there are mods that can make it into an actual pumpkin patch, but I'm not aware of what requirements are needed for those types of lots. So I just made it into a cafe, and I think it just suits it very well. You can have your kids come along, create a little bit of festive things. You could also just take one of the coffins and put it into your um, store storage and stuff like that. And I think it's just Chestnut Ridge perfectly. It's in my celebrity safe file, um, which I've been using Chestnut Ridge as a uh, accomplice, a companion, adjacent of Strangerville, just because I love the whole idea of my celebrities living in an Arizona um, does it like state but yeah i really love how it came out it's really cute it's very fun it's perfect for family day at, family days out and everything and it's just not too heavy on your computer or your console so i really hope you guys enjoy thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe but if you don't want to this also okay appreciate you staying so i'm gonna listen to all the marrow it's also don't forget to leave a comment down below i read all of your comments the more the rarier and i'll see you guys in the next video okay, bye <laughs>